Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and based on your polling and votes that I posted on my Instagram, let's get started with a series of Docker. So the very first thing is go ahead and watch the previous video where I explained what is Docker. The brief initial knowledge of Docker is necessary. Not practical one, but you should understand what exactly we are about to start. So for that, that video is more than enough. Now let's go ahead and talk about the installation part of the Docker. In this video, we are going to install the Docker, we'll understand some of the under the hood concepts of Docker, as well as we'll perform our very favorite Hello World. So let's move up here. And yes, I will be sharing my Adobe XD scale in this entire series. I'm learning something new. So in the installation process, we have got a few steps that we have to do uh, before the installation of the Docker. First and foremost, you might want to verify that your Docker is installed on your system or not. So just fire up your terminal and here is a quick sidebar for all the Windows user. Please use Git Bash. Please don't use the default uh, Windows terminal. It's not really great. Please try to use Git Bash, which is again freely available and you can install it by just saying next, 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 I agree. So first and foremost, what I want you to do is open up your terminal and type the command docker. We are expecting that docker is not installed on your system. Even if it is installed, that's fine. Go ahead and continue the video. So as of now, my system is absolutely fresh and docker is not installed here. So what are the steps to install the docker? First and foremost, we need to create an account. And I know some of you really hate that to download any software, we should create an account or not. But in this case, you actually need an account. And later on, when we are going to host our Docker containers, like a social image, it's going to be necessary at that time as well. Then we have to download the Docker, install it and verify. So pretty fairly easy steps that we have to follow. Let's go ahead and follow that up here. So go on to the website docker.com and in the docker.com you're going to see a lot of people are appreciating it a whole lot of things are going on. Just click on this get started. Now before you click on the get started I also want to share one more resource as just a few seconds ago I was saying that this account will be helpful in socializing your container. This is what I was talking about. This is an uh, URL of hub.docker.com where you can find these socially available images, some by verified publisher like Oracle, by Couchbase, Postgres, Nginx, and a whole bunch of Redis, uh, Busybox. We are gonna be using Busybox. Not only that, later on I'll show you how you can publish your own image up here. Because if you search on something like uh, Hello Crow, uh, there should be something, uh, Hello Crow image. So I hopefully the Hello Crow is gonna come up. No, it's not gonna come up as of now. I guess I need to put up an entire URL there. The reason why I'm searching for it, because I published it. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, moving further, let's click on this get started and you should be into the developer tab. And once you are on this developer tab, you can see at the side download desktop and take a tutorial. You don't need to take a tutorial, you just need to download this and don't worry about the pricing, absolutely Docker is free to try and the entire course is gonna be on the free Docker. Now in case you don't have an account, just click on the sign up and just create an account. Here's a quick word of caution. Now, if you're gonna look for this Docker ID, make sure you choose an ID, which is something that you remember and that you want to share with the entire world. Once a Docker ID is being set, it cannot be changed. So make sure you have an absolute amazing ID that you really want and then only move forward. Just agree the terms and create an account. Should be absolutely simple. I already got my Docker ID, so I'm gonna just go ahead and log in up here. And once you click on the sign in, please don't save this, no, nothing. Just, it says uh, download Docker desktop for Mac. I'm on a Mac, that's why I'm gonna download the Mac version. You can download the Windows version. The installation is exactly same. Next, 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 I agree, okay. So that's kind of a stuff. Let's go on to the download desktop for Mac and it's gonna download on the desktop. Yeah, fine, so let's go ahead and get there. It's a pretty decent size of a download. It's gonna take just a few seconds up here. It's 651 MB. So let's wait for a few seconds so that it just uh, does all the downloading and all that stuff. Just a few seconds. So 
So the Docker is now on my system. I'm gonna just click on this Docker image so that it opens up that image. Now in case you are on the Windows, uh, just go ahead, open it up. There is no such extraordinary thing in the installation. It's pretty ridiculously simple installation. For the Mac, it's actually much more easier than that. Let me show you. Why is it opening up on other screen? It says just drag and drop the Docker app into application and that's literally what I have to do. Just click and drag. And in case you have seen any kind of Apple installation, that's how the installation works on Apple. On the Windows, it just next, 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 I agree, okay. And it's gonna just copy this Docker onto my applications folder. Uh, let me fast forward this also. Okay, so it's being copied to my application folder. On my Mac, I can just press command space and type the command uh, Docker to just uh, make sure the Docker is up and running. Now, for the Windows user, just find it up onto your start menu and just click on the Docker. What you're gonna see as a Windows user on the very right hand side, uh, bottom of that, the notification bar is gonna be saying the Docker is up here, up and running. For the Mac user, it's gonna appear on the top right corner of your uh, kind of a menu bar, navigation bar, whatever we call this in the Mac. So that's gonna come up. And uh, that's all it takes. And I'm gonna just allow it with all the passwords and everything, whatever it needs. Uh, just go ahead and submit all of these password. Okay, now what's going to do is let me show you what it's uh, gonna show it to you as well because that's actually a little bit out of the recording area. Uh, it's asking me, I hope you can see that at the very top, it's asking me for the Docker ID and password. So again, your Docker ID is exactly same what you have entered while creating the account. So let me go ahead and enter my Docker ID. It's gonna ask for the Windows user also. So go ahead and just enter your password and just click on this login button. It's gonna just log in, currently logged in, and it's gonna take just a moment for the very first time to just make sure it's up and running and make sure we are looking for the green button. So once the green button is up, that means the Docker is up and running and we can take advantage of this. Now once the things are green, both for Windows and Mac user and even for the Linux user, now it's time that we actually fire up a command on our terminal. So as soon as I click on this Docker, previously it said command not found and when I run it this time, it gives me a whole bunch of things. As soon as, as long as you are getting that whole lot of things, that means Docker is installed successfully on your system. But there's a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna learn our very first command onto the Docker. I can just simply type Docker space version. There are variety of version checking commands in the Docker. We are gonna just use the Docker version. And the commands actually do change uh, multiple times, but we're gonna see how this works on. Uh, looks like the Docker, okay, where is that command? Okay, so there we go, I tried a Docker version and I got a version and all of that. Again, this command, Docker version, can be a little bit different. It's gonna give you the same result, but it can be different. We're gonna learn that as we move forward. So the Docker engine is of community type. Its version is 19.0.3, 19.03.4. And that's all what we are looking up for. We have a Go version installed, Git commit and all of that. So as long as you're getting this, that's made awesome. It's working fine. But do we want to stop it right here? I want to take you onto one more step further. So let's go ahead and click Control L. And now the most important thing, we're gonna run our hello world command in the Docker. So what we need to do is simply go ahead and type onto a terminal, Docker run, and then we're gonna type hello dash world. Before you type that, I want you to take to this uh, website, which is hub.docker.com, and I'm gonna just go onto this hub. Okay, now we're gonna first check out what we are, and my hello crow is there. No, we don't want to check that out. So we're gonna look for this hello world here as well first. This hello world. Okay. So notice here that this hello world is a Docker official image, which we are trying to take advantage of this. And it says, uh, do you just have to type this command docker pull hello world, but we are not gonna do that right now. Instead, we are gonna just write docker run hello world. And there is a strong reason for that. I want to show you something for that. So let's go up here and nope, all lowercase, docker run hello dash world, my bad. So let's run this command. 
and notice the error messages. The one of the key skill of becoming a programmer or just handling computers in general is don't get panic with these error messages. Instead, just try to take a look on that. I'm going to run this command again and then I'm going to show you what happened just right now. I'm going to run docker run hello dash world again and let's go that and there we go. It says there we go. A lot of things appeared up here. Let's go at the very top to understand. Notice here the second time I got a message hello from docker and a bunch of other things. Let's see what happened at the first. So uh, right where did I run that command? There we go. This is where I run that command docker run hello world. What is happening here? It says unable to find image hello world colon latest. I'm going to talk more on this colon latest locally. So it says pulling from the library hello world. Then it started to pull and pull complete. We got a digest to make sure that it's the very authentic image and downloaded a newer image of hello world and then it said the hello world. While on the other hand, the second time what happened when I run this command docker run hello world, immediately a hello from docker is being given to me. Time to understand what is going on in here. Uh, for that, I have created an artboard for you. Okay, this is what we are going to have. So let me just remove this. There we go. So whenever you are having a docker, uh, assume this is your computer. I've tried to make a computer. So this is a computer. On your computer, whenever you install a Docker, what happens is you are accessing a Docker client. This is the top level layer which you always access, nothing more than that. As soon as you quickly say Docker is up and running means the green icon is on. That means a Docker daemon is running. We actually call all the server processes as daemon. You might have seen these as HTTP D server. That D stands for the daemon. Some people call it as daemon, however you like to pronounce that. I really don't have any grudge for that. And you also get a local access of local image storage. So on your computer, there is kind of a folder which keeps all of these images. Now, what are these images? We'll discuss that later on. So there we go. So these are the local images. As soon as you quickly run this command docker run hello world, it first goes to the daemon and says the client is asking to run an image which is hello world. Docker looks into the local image and says, hey, I don't have any local image of hello world. So what should I do? It says, no worries, no problem at all. You can simply go on to Docker Hub online and look if there's this image available there. So it said, hey, there is an image of hello world available there. So what it did, it actually just copied the latest image into this local storage and then it started to run that command again. And this time it was able to find that. When we were running this command again one more time, the Docker client said, I want to run a hello world. It says Docker daemon, hey, client is asking to run hello world. This time local image storage said that, hey, do we have locally stored hello world, a copy of the latest uh, image which is available online. It said, hey, yes, we got it here. This time it's not gonna ask on to the internet or the hub for that and it's gonna directly just run this image up here. So amazing concept. But why does these images and containers are so much popular and how you can create one container for yourself and upload it for the entire world to use? We're gonna see a lot about that and understanding how these entire process actually works and how Docker makes our life easier by installing uh, Nginx, MySQL, Redis, and a whole bunch of other things as well. But I think that is uh, enough for uh, the start of the series. Make sure you share it with all of your friends. It gives me a great motivation to create more content and create them more creatively so that you can enjoy them. That's it for this video. Hit that subscribe button and enjoy this Docker series.